I joined ESP in early 1988, shortly after recording our first record, Ignorance, with Metal Blade Records. And um, I got the Mirage Custom and Pearl White. Had a uh, Floyd trademark tremolo, humbucker, and two single coils. And that was the beginning of real life for me. And that was the first time I held something. It was a neck through body and the components and the build quality. And I knew I would be there for life. And now it's 2022, so I'm proving it's a life commitment. About, what, 35 years? Yeah, I think it was uh, around 1989, I was ready for my second guitar, and I, and I got an M1 Custom, it was black, chrome hardware, it was like a Harley Davidson or a leather jacket, it was perfect. And you know, it was stripped down, had less pickups, just the, the single uh, double coil, uh, EMG 81, Floyd Rose again. That started my love of the more stripped down metal version, just a single pickup, you know, and I think it was probably around 91, I did my first official, you know, custom shop, where it was basically a standard M1 Custom, but I got it in gunmetal gray. Which is cool, if you turn it around, it kind of go from blue to purple. How about this one? Shit. Just a few years later, I ordered my third M1, and that was Oxblood, which was a really cool color. It was gloss, but it almost looked flat just the way its reflection worked and to this day that's still one of my favorite guitars actually just a few years ago 2019 I had it on tour and I think still plays great which is a testimony to the build quality and just getting it right. Long story short about the playability over time not only are they rugged but there's also something I don't know if they get drier in time or, or what it is but it's almost like a wine it does seem like they mature or something beautiful happens with the aging of the instrument. But I would say, yeah, over time they do get a bit better. But you gotta take time out to talk about that LTD 1987 Custom. Mine's a bit modified, we put some EMGs in it so it'd be more consistent with the other guitar. You don't gotta fiddle with the amp when you switch guitars. We also put a futon bridge in it, which is powder coated white. So I got the black model and the contrast with the white pickups. That guitar is amazing and I want to gravitate toward it. It's just so cool to look at and you pick it up and it plays itself. So, uh, you know, highly recommended if you haven't checked out any of the 1987 series. Get your paws on them and check them out. They're built right. So I had a couple of friends, Ted Aguilera, a great player, Alan Ashby, and they were both rocking the telly. These guys were showing me, like, you know, they're whatever you want to do with them. So then I, you know, I thought to myself, I think I'm ready for my first telly. So I did the traditional two humbuckers, put the selector up here, recessed Floyd, ebony, and I'm like, okay, I need the more metal. So, so we did the uh, nuclear inlays and then put a gas mask, it's kick ass. And to me, it was kind of like a fresh way to get moving again with the new record and a new vibe, having so much time on the other instrument styles. So that's kind of the backstory on how that came along. We're trying to take a country guitar and make it as metal as possible. It's a killer guitar. If I had to do it again, I would do it exactly the same. And I'm enjoying beating the hell out of it nightly right now. Why do I play ESP after 30 years? Because tone matters, authenticity counts, and one thing I can say about ESP, they've always stayed on quality control, focused on what the musician's expectations of the instrument are, playability, comfort, rather it's, you know, the bevels on the back. It's not because they look cool, it's because they feel right. And uh, it's been a consistent thing over three decades with ESP. And uh, I think that's how they got me, and that's why I stayed. And that's why you'll continue to find me right here. 